international speaker and sound with a pro shop, Colorado's leading supplier of pro audio musical equipment with the highest quality guitars, basses, and amps on the planet. From a single cable to PA and lighting systems, DJ and recording equipment, national speaker and sound represents over 90 brands. EV, JBL, Mackie, PRS, Nash, Fox, and Mesa Boogie for the serious musician. National speaker and sound service departments are unrivaled in the region with our certified electronics repair and speaker reconing. Our commercial division is Colorado's leading audiovisual installation contractor. Shop with the experts or visit us online at nationalspeaker.com. All right, Music Buzz Live, we're back here in Studio A. It is hashtag pot talk. Pot talk time, what? Uh. There's Chris's song. Pot he loves talk. it, dude. He does. I watch him. He bicked his head just for this. He did. He rolls to this jam. What? <laughs> so what's going on? This THC week? style. Uh, so we got Kayvon. Kayvon is from a whole lot Hello. of different things. Welcome, welcome, man. He's just Kayvon. Thanks for having He's me. A yeah. Appreciate it. Yes. A lot of folks within the industry know Kayvon. Um, obviously, with Denver Relief back in the day, um, now that you guys are kind of have stepped away from that game, but now, most importantly, you are kind of heading the fight with yes on, this Yes on 300 movement. Let us yeah, know. The, that. the lead proponent of that, it's primarily being run out of our office, Denver Relief Consulting. So even though the dispensary and the grow's gone, I uh, sold that in August, the grow to Willie Nelson's group and, and yeah. all that. Uh, we're now uh, really running towards advocacy. And this is something that's been an issue for a while uh, since the passage of Amendment 64, even with medical prior to that. Right. Uh, we've allowed folks the uh, opportunity to purchase and possess cannabis, but given really a lot of people not a place to consume it, not just tourists and the 70 million plus uh, that come here every year. It's a lot of people that live in HOA or landlord control controlled properties, people that don't want to consume around their children or their grandparents, uh, veterans in, mili- in federal housing, right. a lot of reasons. Right. So you sold to Willie Nelson. Yeah, well, to the to the licensed brand yeah. here. Uh, yeah, Colorado yeah, that and, is you know, the face of Yeah, yeah. We uh, at the time, I believe, we were the oldest sales tax license in existence in Denver. Uh, started back in two thousand nine. We were just talking about that mm. that wonderful year back in Denver. Yeah, uh, and so <laughs> wild July west style. Seven yeah. and a half years. It was it was pretty crazy. So to have the kind of the legacy get carried through to to Willie Nelson on the growing manufacturing, and then we sold the dispensary to Terrapin Care Station. I mean, right. that's just epic. Very epic, dude. That's a total epic story that you can tell. Your grandkids and your great grandkids, dude. Willie fucking Nelson. What? No. <laughs> Got a picture with him before he died. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that? That's awesome. All right. So back to 300. Yeah. So 300, um, Emmett, who, who, who has been working hand in hand with you, he came on a couple weeks ago. It was really, really awesome. Uh, very informative. Kind of talked about it to the audience. But I want you to be able to explain this was pulled off last year off the ballot completely. What's changed? Why is it better this year? Yeah, so similar to last year's we're working on with Vicente Cedarberg folks. Um, we kind of took did Denver Relief Consulting did the, this, the the wheel this year and really drove it from the beginning. Uh, but we did get it on the ballot last year, a similar initiative, and we ended up pulling it because the city, Chamber of Commerce, downtown Denver Partnership uh, really begged us um, to pull it off. They didn't have a, a stake in, in the conversation. They, they didn't have a seat at the table. Makes uh, sense. So they feel very uncomfortable with, with this uh, potentially getting passed. Denver totally. overwhelmingly supports uh, cannabis reform uh, every year in the elections. Mm-hmm. I'm 65, I think in Denver is like 68% right. in support. So they, they had fears that if they didn't have a, a part of that conversation, that it was going to be something that they weren't, they didn't know how to deal with. Right. So we, we pulled it off under the, under the promise from them that they said uh, they would discuss it this spring, uh, that city council would, that the mayor's office would, that didn't happen. Uh-oh. Now, actually what they did is they made it more difficult on cannabis businesses here in Colorado. Right. Talking about, or in Denver, talking about the concentration issues, um, right. getting into potency, you know, really perpetuating a lot of the same scare tactics that they've been using for a while that really haven't come to fruition. Totally. But they still get used. Um, so what we did along the way, uh, even though they didn't find progress in this topic, we did. And we said, okay, if, if we're going to call their bluff and if, if they don't talk about it, we're going to we're gonna put it back on the ballot this year. And that's exactly what we did when they found no progress. But in the, the process of it, got to talk with the mayor's office many times about this, members of city council, uh, neighborhood organizations, consumers, cannabis businesses, non-cannabis businesses. Right. And we like to think that what we've created is something that is really conservative it's a it's a baby step into this knowing we would be the first city in the world to regulate the social use of cannabis totally um there, there needs to, we're going to figure out best practices over time so let's right. find a way to step into it right and that's exactly what we did we think it's considered of all stakeholders viewpoints it's not going to make everybody happy but nothing ever does right we think that this goes a long way to making the most people happy as possible while we tackle this new thing that's not going away um that is that is it, it's it's in california nevada on their ballots right. uh, this fall as part of their recreational initiatives 
years. It's been legalized up in Alaska. They haven't really implemented it yet. Right. Um, but this is a conversation that is not going away nationally as recreational cannabis spreads. Why not have Colorado, especially Denver, deal with it on the front end like we have so many other issues. With so many other issues do that. And that's what I've loved about it. And that's why I love seeing the fight fight along all the years that we've been involved. I mean, I say it all the time on the show that I think Denver has always done it right. Put a really good blueprint out there to make it so that it's duplicatable or a duplicatable system by a lot of the states that are in our nation. And I think that having this be such a, an important part of how it will affect society because it's inevitable it's going to to be able to be on the forefront and have it boiled down to the fact of how you guys have it um drawn out having each neighborhood be you know have the, its own voice it's pretty amazing i like it yeah one of the because of the concentration issues they brought in the cannabis industry this you're saying there's too many cannabis businesses in these neighborhoods well why is that it's because the city put us there uh, seven eight years ago when we were talking about starting right. but regardless the cannabis industry gets thrown on the bus under the bus all the time for problems that really have nothing to do with the cannabis industry but to get ahead of that because they say we don't integrate into our communities enough that we don't um you know get get in dialogue with our neighbors and our businesses that, that are in our communities uh we said okay well let's let's go one step further than even getting a liquor license and require that these folks gain formal support from their eligible neighborhood organization where they want to open this business now there's some places that have seven overlapping in denver there's 192 in the entire city right so, neighborhood organizations <clears throat> neighborhood organizations can yeah. you believe it and that includes business improvement districts merchants associations and registered neighborhood organizations you only need approval from one of them in your neighborhood so i sit on the board of the art district on santa fe for instance we're looking at this right. Art district on santa fe is looking for a differentiator something to get people down there beyond just first Fridays, this is a way for us to do that, to set ourselves apart from 32nd Street or Rhino or Cherry Creek, where they have businesses that keep people there all 30, 31 days of the month. Right. San, uh, our district on Santa Fe doesn't have that. Cannabis consumption, a social place to do that, a couple social places to do that, would have that impact. And we're looking at doing that because we need that leg up. Colfax, East and West are both looking at this. Right. Uh, this is to create a new, you know, we already have the culture here. Let's create an economy around that culture uh, that goes beyond just selling cannabis and merchandise. Totally. And there's something to be something to said about the use of it, enjoying it socially, enjoying all the things we do right now with alcohol. Well, with cannabis as well, or even getting outside of the bars and restaurants, looking at yoga studios and massage parlors and coffee houses and music venues. There's all sorts of things and new, I think, business models that are come out of this because it's so malleable and can get in integrated into any business. Any business, so for will, sure. Will there be opportunities for cannabis and alcohol to overlap? As we have it written right now, yes. Now, it's very funny to say that the Liquor Enforcement Division is currently trying to change their rules, uh, potentially illegally, uh, which we're dealing with right now in a, in a legal capacity, um, to uh, crazy to, to disallow uh, the consumption of cannabis and liquor license establishments. Now, I know people are worried about poly consumption, but and that that's the, the dual consumption. If you that the poly, it's in my head because the city likes to use that term. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But but nonetheless, give me a break. People have been uh, drinking and and smoking cannabis forever. It's not since gonna, high school. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> since before high school, even I think if you could get away with it, right? It's not going to start just because this passes. Right. Will yeah, that happen more? Exactly. Sure, but that's why you educate people. We need to have these conversations. But and it's going to happen under the watchful eye, right? Isn't that the whole benefit of all this? Is that you can actually kind of control the actions that happen because of people smoking cannabis in public. They're already doing it. Yeah, look at the smart people. You know, those are the folks that are morally opposed to everything we do in the cannabis industry, saying, what about the kids? What about the kids? Well, what about them? Let's, let's stop making people smoke on fucking sidewalks and in parks right. and give them places inside that are supervised and exactly. allowed and, exactly. and for them. And right. I think I think that's huge. You know, it it is in, in accordance with the Colorado Clean Under Air Act. So we're not looking at a lot of smoking places. There are ways to get around that uh, through the, but it's just like cigarettes. So you can't smoke cigarettes inside unless they have three or fewer employees or certain special events and things right. like that. Right. But you could allow for outdoor combustion and heated tents and and all these things that people do to make yeah. it comfortable to be outside in the winter here. There's been a lot of hoops that we've all tried to jump through along the way, private properties and everything like that. It's happening. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. It has to be figured out one way or another. Or or the whole other drastic is going to happen and they're just going to take weed away, which we all are just, I don't think that would ever happen. So you have to figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's got to, and you know, we've, <clears throat> there, there is the impetus for just wanting people to have a place to go, but there's also the fact that 
a lot of people don't and are now getting busted for it. Right. We've had public consumption tickets rise dramatically in Denver since uh, the passage of Amendment 64. Predominantly, and the, the disparity is huge, uh, black and brown people over white people. Um, <laughs> since legalization, black people are arrested and cited for cannabis at a rate 2.6 times that of white people. Uh. In the most progressive cannabis city in America, uh, maybe in the world, uh, we are still arresting blacks at a pretty tremendous rate over white people for simply having legal amounts of cannabis. Right. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. Well said, for sure. I totally agree. And and that's a, a massive issue. And I think that the peacefulness within the cannabis industry and within the Den Denver city itself, our you know, local residents, I think, are very peaceful, figuring out sort of folks, dude. So one of the things that I really enjoy also about this uh, initiative is that it is temporary. It can, it can be voted out in four years if we're not doing it the right way, dude. Yeah, we've, give, got, we've got a couple of pieces that allow us to walk into this. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. One is these are permits, not licenses. Right. So they don't have to be a year like a liquor license. Um, they could be for two hours. Uh, my art district on Santa Fe um, uh, comparison, we, we could do it for a first Friday and say, you know what, that worked, but I'd like to change this next time. Or I, we, we were worried about this and this didn't come to fruition, let's take that out. Or maybe now we, we've done it six times, we feel comfortable, let's do it for a month or right. let's do it for a quarter or a whole year. Yeah. Um, but, but they can choose to develop those best practices slowly. And then, yeah, if, if it's a complete and miserable failure, which I'll think uh, we feel that it's not going to be obviously. <laughs> right, for sure. But if it is and people aren't satisfied and city council or voters don't extend it or create something new, this goes away. Right. Yep. I mean, it's got to be figured out. Might as well have some test subjects along the way. That's right. You know, right? right? I know you got your fingers in a lot of other, other, other businesses, a lot of other ongoings in Denver. We hope that you have a chance to stick around um, because, Chris, actually, we have a new sponsor called Sexy Pizza. I don't know if you're familiar. You ever heard of this they place, Sexy Pizza? pizza. I've, heard yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. I've heard of them. Oh, I think that uh, I've heard that, that you might be someone I could talk to in regards to getting Chris, our GM over here on the Pearl Street location, a raise. Is that right? Can you put the word in? <laughs> Is that Mr. Heberlein? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you put a word in? I think we could probably. Uh, that's we could awesome. Probably make that happen. We love Chris, dude. <laughs> we do love Chris. Chris, Chris, uh, Chris loaned us out some of his staff, and uh, I'm excited for the treat that we have. Do, do you want to run it now, my friend? We can run it now. Right on. The motel minute? Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll run, run it a couple run times. It right now? Yeah, we can All run right, it a couple times. <laughs> we appreciate you. Here comes Kayvon, Thank you. Hell yeah. So we do this thing. We got four pies. We figured one would do you guys good. We can hit up a couple of the other residents. That's cool. uh, sexy pizza. Sexy pizza. You got a favorite? Pizza. You got a favorite uh, topping? Uh, oh, sausage. Shit. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Sexy pizza. Sexy pizza. Sexy pizza. Hey. Ow! 
Barley. Hey, say mention World Barrel, you get 20% off your purchase. World Barrel. If you come in, you get 20% off if you mention World Barrel. Will you guys come out front of the door? Sure. I mean, without hands. Yeah, just that, man. <laughs> What's up? So do you have some residents here that are deserving of a of a pizza? We do. Uh, what, which which units you want to come with? Four. Yeah. Which unit? Number oh. four. <laughs> Did someone say unit? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I got a sexy pizza for you. Delivery. World Barrel. We're giving, away, <laughs> we're giving away free sexy pizza, man. Yeah, from where? So do you have some residents here that are deserving of a of a pizza? We do. Uh, what, which which units you want to come with? Four. Yeah. Which units? Number four. <laughs> Did someone say unit? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I got a sexy pizza for you. Delivery. World Barrel. We're giving away, <laughs> we're giving away free sexy pizza, man. Yeah, from where? Sex, sexy sexy pizza. pizza. As long as it has sex parts on it. <laughs> sausage. It's all good, Rob. If it's it don't for, have sex for, parts on it, then I don't it's, want it's it. It's for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's for me? Yeah, it's a free, it's really? it's a free pizza. pizza from Sexy Pizza. They're right Take over here pizza. on Pearl Street. Do we have like finger looking good or do we have like... Uh... <laughs> I think they're just pepperonis, dear. Sausage. And say, Mansion World Viral, you get 20% off. World viral. Viral, you get 20% off. Hell yeah. The only thing is, can you deep throw oh, a pizza? Let's see, let's see, can you? Nah. Oh, uh, she almost got it. It's too she hot. Got it. Seven needs some sexy pizza. Which, which unit? Seven. Oh. <laughs> seven. Number seven. A number seven unit. Number seven. I'm not even getting started on that. <laughs> Boy, I love there a woman in here. Congratulations, Hello. sir. You've won yourself a sexy pizza. Oh, right. Sexy pizza. Yeah. Sexy pizza. Sexy pizza. Oh. Mention World Power, you get 20% off. Uh, yeah. Say, Mention World Power, you get 20% off. You gotta say it. Uh, what was Mention World Power, and you get 20% off. Yeah. Mention World Power, you get 20% off. Yeah. Mention World Power. There you go. 20% off. Yeah. 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 All right. Sexy, sexy pizza. pizza. Sexy pizza. Sexy pizza. Hey, yeah. do, do you like pepperoni? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Glad you like the sausage. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some style. Give you that thing in your walk. Getting everyone to talk about your bad habits. Taking slap like hits. Making you wish you never were taught to rock like this. Death kiss to your four year. We'll need the lower year to get you through the door before you roll. Mention World Viral at Sexy Pizza. You get 20% off. 20% off. I don't even got 20% left. Move, just need some rest, cause you'll be praying to the porcelain soon. Nobody liking your tune, puking toxic fumes, death clowns staring you down, making animal balloons. These drugs are what you choose. Bright circus afternoon, sweating meth bullets in the middle of your blood. Motel Minute. Motel Minute. Motel Minute. Let's get it on. Motel Minute. Motel Minute. Red Pond, baby. For me, for you die. Push it to the limit, cause the limit is the sky. Staying high in Soberville takes a skill hard to fulfill. Bringing power from your will. Spilt milk when you rebuild. Clear your visibilities, your insecurities, adaptabilities to finally see what you should be seeing, what you should be feeding from. Over strong World, World viral! viral! World viral, 20% off. You know you, you want to what? Well, music was live. <laughs> motel Minute, new Motel Minute. Yeah, that was some crazy shit. What'd you think, Avon? Was that good work? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. I, I've, I've been driving that by that motel for quite some time. It's nice to see a little a peek inside. <laughs> Kayvon from Yes on 300. Make sure that when you go out, vote. If you're here in Denver, make sure you vote Yes on 300. Kayvon, totally appreciate you being here, man. Thank you for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. All right. All right. We'll be right back with Nirvana. Stick around. It's Music Buzz Live.